a topic that I am extremely happy to be having this morning as a new mom myself. Now, this conversation is not just for the ladies, but for the men as well, because education doesn't just have to be for the person that's breastfeeding or may have to breastfeed in the future. Now, there are a number of myths and misconceptions surrounding breastfeeding, and this morning we're going to get into that. Now, breastfeeding is a natural occurrence as just a few days, or maybe even the day after giving birth, the, the female body naturally produces milk. Now, there are so many things to talk about when we talk about breastfeeding. Some women are not able to naturally breastfeed after having a baby, and that in itself is also okay. There's no shaming for women who are unable to, but if the choice is to be made, breastfeeding should definitely be the one. This morning, I have the privilege of speaking with one of the breastfeeding trainers, as well as midwife at the TRHA, Mrs. Akila McClatchy Alfred, as well as Deborah Cook Warner. Warner, right? Warner. Warner, right. Definitely. Who is a baby friendly coordinator at the TRHA as well. Good morning and welcome. Morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning to the Vian public. Right. Thank you so much for being here this morning, ladies. Now, this conversation is a much needed one, specifically mm -hmm. with the fact that this week, we are celebrating World Breastfeeding Week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important for mothers who already have kids, as well as mothers-to-be, mm -hmm. and new moms like myself to understand the importance of breastfeeding, some of the, new, the nuisances that come with that, and just understanding how they can combat some of the challenges that mm -hmm. come with breastfeeding. Now... Um, Miss McClatchy Alfred, you are a breastfeeding trainer. Um, before we came on air, I was asking what's the difference between a breastfeeding trainer and a lactation consultant? Because after having a baby, if you do experience any challenges with breastfeeding, you're often advised to seek the counsel of a lactation consultant. So tell us mm -hmm. what's the difference and how can women in Tobago access these services? Thank okay. you. Good morning, first of all. So, Breastfeeding counselors and breastfeeding lactation Consultant. consultants, they are different because the it's lactation consultants are advanced training, right? It's a more experienced training which requires more experience and one-on-one -on -one practice and all of that. So we have in Tobago breastfeeding counselors and we are trained under PAHO. So we did the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. So we have breastfeeding counselors and we train staff and patients yeah, about breastfeeding and how to support them and even mother-friendly care. We talk about mother-friendly care also incorporated in the whole breastfeeding process. So the lactation consult is just an advanced training and we don't have any to note, but we have one we know of in Tobago, so we mostly have breastfeeding counselors. Okay, and how would someone get access to, 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 to that type of service if they are experiencing challenges with breastfeeding or who should they go to? So with the support, so because the new this year's team is closing the gap, support for all. So with that, TRHA, we are now considered um, a baby friendly institution, right? A baby friendly institution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, with that whole process coming on board, we created a breastfeeding support group. So it's called TABS, Tobago Adventures of Breastfeeding Support Group. So coming out of that group, we have breastfeeding trainers and counselors, right? We are mostly based on WhatsApp. And there we have a nice community that we share experiences. Mothers will ask about concerns, problems. We give our support. We do visits. We refer if any, if necessary. Yeah, so that is basically how we are running our breastfeeding support. And if mothers need any help in Tobago. And of course, we have the DHVs in the community that we also refer them to. We have the maternity ward that we could always also refer them to, and they always contact us if need be. Right. And one of the concerns that many new moms have is about their supply. Would I have a supply that can sustain exclusive breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. And, you know, traditionally in Tobago, there are different herbs, or, you know, different bush that they will give you to drink to increase your milk supply. Um, how can you 
Talk to us a bit about the natural remedies. Oh, is it okay for women to include natural mm -hmm. remedies to increase that um, milk supply or should they be cautious when trying different traditional remedies? Mrs. Warner. So good morning again. So initially, m all mothers, most mothers are able to breastfeed, produce milk, right? Because we know that milk starts producing on the breast during that antenatal period from around the 16th week. So you have colostrum coming from the breast. So most mothers, but we know that there are some mothers who definitely may not be able to. But some of the natural things that we encourage is to... Um, Put the baby on the breast on demand. So you continue to feed the baby. The more the baby is put to the breast, the more milk will be supplied, right? There's also other things that we could do, natural things. You try to breastfeed in the wee hours of the morning time. The more the breast empties, mm -hmm. the more milk is supplied, right? So we have those. So some of the mothers who would have issues or challenges with breastfeeding or with milk supply, Sometimes breastfeeding is also an a, a, um, emotional thing, right? So if they're, they are under any stress, right, stress could cause a decreased production. So you need to be comfortable as much as possible. So this is where the team comes in, support for mothers. So once the mothers have the support, we know that there's, they are encouraged to um, breastfeed. So you spoke about the natural the the remedies the bush and stuff so we usually would use that vervine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so that would help some mothers to um breast to produce milk mm -hmm. right so these are some of the natural ones that we have okay and uh are there any caution that women should take even when trying the natural remedies because we know even with um a lot of the bush that we tend to use we are unable to measure the dosage. Exactly, yes, So that is true. how do we then understand, okay, because, you know, sometimes we might just go out and pick a whole bag, mm -hmm. put it in the pot, yeah, boil it, it, you know, and use mm -hmm. it. But how should it be used in a safe manner that does not um, negatively impact the concentration of the breast milk? That's not something that we can answer this morning. We might have to contact our herbalist to the find herbalist, out that one. Yes, but yeah. you always know that we try to just do the natural things. But yes, we know of the vervine that it will work about three to five leaves. You put in a liter of water and you drink throughout the day. All right. Right? Ex but yeah. And in terms of, um, no, this is not just for women because men, you have to also be able to support um, your wife or your girlfriend through this journey. And she said something that was extremely important when women are, you know, at their most comfortable okay. state. And we know that um, after having a baby, women oftentimes experience some level, maybe um, on a spectrum, they may experience some level of postpartum mm -hmm. depression or just the natural effects of postpartum in itself, you know, that the body goes through as you try to regulate your emotions and your hormones. So men, you know, you have to create that environment or try your best to make sure that she is within, you know, that comfortable state of mind to produce breast milk. Now, can you said by putting the baby on the breast that also helps to um, generate that milk mm -hmm. but does the breast pumping also have the same effect let's say for instance baby sleeping you can now be pumping so that you can keep that milk supply going because I know that that's something that I would have done personally yeah you know to keep the breast milk supply going I would have breastfed but also use the pump Yes, yeah, so we encourage mothers to express because when you express your breast milk, then you have a relative, a family member, a friend that could assist you, provide support and feed baby while you get some rest, you get some me time, you know. So, yes, we encourage expressing of breast milk and someone else feed. We encourage expressing, especially between 12 midnight and 3 a.m. is when the milk supply is really high. So that is a good time to express breast milk. 
Okay. So we, yeah, we focus on expression and storage because expression is one thing, but storing the breast milk correctly yes. Yes. and then preparing it for use for baby is another thing. So we cover all of that expression, storage, and preparing the milk. I remember that feed. was a very intricate part of the details that I received when I was being trained that first week after mm -hmm. having the baby and, um, well... I would have had the baby in the Netherlands. So usually they send oh, okay. a care taker to your home for one week. Okay, and nice. that person would train you with everything, breastfeeding, feeding, cleaning, mm -hmm. everything with the That's baby. Nice. And she would have informed me that the breast milk can only stay out one hour mm -hmm. on the counter after being expressed. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it was maybe like a day or so in the regular compartment in the, in the fridge. And then it can stay for months in the mm -hmm. freezer. So what is the actual time period between expressing the milk, leaving it out on the counter, keeping it stored in the fridge and then moving on to the freezer? Okay, so based on um, from WHO and PAHO, they recommend that once breast milk is expressed, it could stay at room temperature four to six hours, okay. yeah, maximum six hours. So just on the counter, in the weather environment is cool. If it's extremely hot, it'll go down to four hours, okay. right? So stay on the counter that. So if it goes into the fridge, the ready water, your juice, your butter, your eggs, cheese, uh, that could stay there for one week. Okay. And then in the freezer compartment, on the, so the top part of the door, the fruit in the top part of the freezer, mm -hmm. right? That could stay there for three to six months. And in the big deep freeze that you'll hardly ever go into, eight to 12 months, maximum 12 months. But of course, a label your breast milk with a date and a time because you do a first in, first out process. The right. milk that you express first, you'll use that first. And then, so you could even pack and store the fridge like that. Right. And we're using the back of the fridge rather than the fridge door. The back of the is the Something interesting part. that I learned from social media, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we have to filter social media information. But what I what I learned is that um, the breast milk that is expressed in the morning is totally different from the one that is expressed night. at night. Yes. So Sorry. the one that might be expressed at night may help the baby to sleep mm -hmm. a little bit more. Because as a, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. As opposed to in the morning. So. I guess that, that that is what makes it so important yeah. to label when exactly the time that you would have pumped so that um, in the morning when you wake up, you're not going to give the baby maybe some nighttime breast milk yeah. and have them sleeping, you know, yeah, out through, throughout the true. day. So yeah. um, now when it comes to breast milk supply and breastfeeding, the truth of the matter is everyone cannot breastfeed, mm -hmm. but we want the persons who can breastfeed to breastfeed and try doing that exclusively if they yeah. can for the first six months. But in the cases where women cannot breastfeed, do we have the facility in Tobago where women can donate breast milk? No, we don't have that service as yet. Um, it's practiced in um, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And there are talks about bringing a breast milk bank, you call it, in a Trinidad. But, you know, it will be a whole cultural shift, mm -hmm. right? But not as yet. Not right. as yet. I, I I see it happening a lot in the United mm -hmm. States as well, yes. where women are mm -hmm. able to, you know, donate milk to mothers who may be cancer patients mm -hmm. or whatever diseases or any kind of health condition that may, mm -hmm. you know, prohibit them from being able mm -hmm. to breastfeed. But, you know, long ago we used to have the, these um, nurses what? called wet nurses. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is if you have a challenge with breastfeeding, you send your baby down to the neighbor who producing breast milk <laughs> to that neighbor to um to lactate, to feed your breast, feed your baby. So we had lack wet nurses long ago, but because of the culture and because of diseases and all of these things, then we don't have we don't see that as much. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know that um not not even too long ago, sometimes within a household, siblings would yeah, breastfeed siblings. their yes. you know their and siblings' yes, kids, and, and, and that's cousin, still happening. Yeah. You know, so is that something that is encouraged to be done in the most sanitized way? Um, or is that something to stay away from? We encourage it because, you know, breast milk is a living tissue that promotes the optimal growth and development for the baby. So we encourage it once everything is okay, sterile, con clean conditions and stuff. Yes, we encourage it because the aim is to get the baby to breastfeed and to get that milk for the optimal growth and development. All right. You know. Excellent. Now we're going to take a quick break right here and we're going to be back right after this. See you soon, guys.
Good morning and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. I am your host Chanel Felix and this morning we have been chatting with the ladies of the TRHA regarding breastfeeding and we spoke a lot about that but we're going to talk a bit about breastfeeding while being sick. A lot of mothers, especially new moms or first time moms, tend to not want to engage in breastfeeding when they're sick because of fear that they, you know, would transmit whatever sickness it is that they're having, specifically the flu, to the baby. What are the recommendations for breastfeeding while being sick? We encourage breastfeeding even if you are not well um have the flu now one of the things we know of is that breastfeeding has antibodies so the mother naturally passes on the antibodies onto her baby so the baby is building immunity right so when she's okay when she's not down in bed down in bed um we recommend that she continues to breastfeed we also recommend that she um she expressed the milk and she can give the um, baby the milk. Um, if the baby gets the cold, it means that the baby starts building immunity. So mm -hmm. the next time around that baby, the, the may have the cold, it, the baby will have the cold, but it wouldn't take the baby down. So the baby is strong enough, the baby rebounds quickly, right? With the breast milk, the mommy is passing on immunity onto the baby. So we do recommend. There are very few areas where we recommend not um, breastfeeding babies right and that will kind of go into the hiv part aspect of yes, it you can. even if you are hiv positive you can breastfeed but there are criteria okay. the criteria is for hiv positive mother is that her viral load must be undetected mm -hmm. and she must be on her um her medication okay. right taking the medication okay. round the clock she compliant with her medica medication right she is educated about the breastfeeding and all of that and she's encouraged to breastfeed exclusively for six months so she can't go and mix feed for example one day she's breastfeeding and next day she goes to the formula she has to continue to breastfeed exclusively for six months so that is the aspect with the um Reg and um, the HIV positive mothers. However, if the viral load is detectable, mm -hmm. we encourage her not to breastfeed because you know breast um, HIV could pass on to the baby, right? Oh, if the virus, problems. yes, the viral load is high, right? Okay. Well, well, thank you for that. That's yeah. new information. Well, for me particularly, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing for a lot of our viewers because. We have traditionally been taught that women with Sticking. HIV um, cannot breastfeed. So th this is great information to mm -hmm. know that as long as your viral load it's is undetectable, undetectable which can be done through consistent Cut, use yes. of the um, medication, yes. yeah. um, that they can also Compliance. breastfeed and live yeah. life like a normal yes. mom. Can. Yeah. Um, now, one of the stresses that come with being a new mom, whether you have had kids before or you're a first time mother, is the idea of going back out to work after having a baby. And one of those stresses that continue to linger on our mind is, you know, breastfeeding or breast pumping while being in work. And what we notice is that a lot of workspaces are not breast pumping friendly, friendly mm -hmm. right although there is the legal requirement for your employer to allow you i believe it's half an hour to an hour mm -hmm. during Great the day to yeah. breastfeed but even though that time is allotted the space is not allotted mm -hmm. so you find some women leave work go home or just i remember within my first two to three months after i was leaving work earlier than usual because by that time in the evening my breasts were fully engorged and I really needed to go it was painful at that point mm -hmm. even though I would have expressed in the morning at yeah. work by the time it's like two three o'clock the pain is almost unbearable so what is being done to advocate for the appropriate spaces to be provided in the workspace to allow for women to comfortably come back out to work and be able to you know um, express that breast milk in an appropriate, comfortable environment. I had persons tell me, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Yeah, Are you in your right mind? Very... I'm not going to the bathroom to breastfeed. Yeah. You exactly. know, so well, what are your recommendations? Well, with last year's theme, last year's theme talked about providing the space 
for mommy to breastfeed or express breast milk. So with that going forward, the Ministry of Health, they started the initiative and they created a space within the Ministry of Health office in Port of Spain for moms to go and breast, express breast milk during the day. So they're passing that mantra on and they're asking um, business places to provide a space for moms where they can express breast milk safely. Because we don't want, we have moms saying that they sometimes they have to go in the washroom and that is not sanitary. Mm -hmm. Or they have a space and then everybody's barging in. Mm -hmm. yeah, because sometimes they might tell you to use the lunch room. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, but you're in there and you're breastfeeding and every five seconds somebody somebody's coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I would have worn clothes that would have allowed me to use a wireless pump that mm -hmm. you can put in That's your bra well, yes. and yeah. you know you yeah. could go about the day and you yes. have a breast pump there but yeah. the truth of the matter is where in Tobago are you going to walk into a store and find a wireless breast pump? It's not something that's readily available mm -hmm. to the average citizen. Now, if someone has the ability to travel it. or to import, they would be able to have access to that, but it is also costly. costly. Mm -hmm. So the average person or the average young mom, someone who just started off their career, might not be able to afford one of those, you know, high-tech wireless pumps. So... The onus is on the employer to create spaces mm -hmm. to allow for women to comfortably, safely, mm -hmm. you know, express breast milk. Yes, I agree. And this is what the theme of this year speaks to, closing the gap and supporting breastfeeding for oh. all. So this comes with the family members. So what we will notice is that when the mothers leave the hospital, about 88% of the mothers leave in the Scarborough General Hospital exclusively breastfed. However, when they're, they're at home, we notice that the numbers go down. So the exclusive breastfeeding rate, they start bringing, they start feeding the baby supplements, giving baby supplements. By the time two months, we realize that that 80% is almost slashed to half, 40%. And then by the time six months, it slashes to, to only 20%. 20%. And when we ask mothers, we realize that the family plays a critical role. So the support is critical, closing the gap. We need to close that gap between that time of leaving the hospital and that six months period. So that has to do with where we play, where we sleep, where we do work, right? And where we recreate. So all these areas must be provided space so that mothers are comfortable to go and express Right, closing the gap. We speak of the um, healthcare worker. We speak of the health institutions, both public and private, providing the spaces, the supportive environment for mothers to really go and have comfortable spaces where they could express their milk. I remember at about seven months, one of my friends, you know, probably called, you know, and I was breastfeeding. And she was like, you're still breastfeeding after six months. What a, what a breast have in it, you know? Mm. Um, you know, what does that breast currently have that could even supply anything to the baby? And I was like, sis, you breastfeed until you feel like you don't want to breastfeed anymore. But there's no time to say, okay, well, no, there's no longer the type of nutrients that the baby needs. I mean, yes, baby is transitioning to solid foods, but there still is the natural nutrition that comes yes. from breastfeeding. So a lot of persons have ideas that, okay, after six months, you no longer need to breastfeed because mm. the breast milk is so light and it's so watery and, you know, baby needs something more fulling um, to sleep for a longer period during the night or just to hold them out for longer. How How do we... Um, understand the time frame within which a mom should continue or stop breastfeeding. So one of the things that we need to know is some of the benefits that breastfeeding is very beneficial to the babies, the mother and the society. So you need to tell them that best breastfeeding is the best nutrient, ideal nutrient for your baby to have optimal growth and development. Babies who are exclusively breastfed have a higher IQ. Right, we have the reduction of obesity and childhood diseases. We have the um, research has shown where 
It reduces breast cancers in mothers, ovarian and breast cancers in mothers. For the society, it is economically safe. It is cheaper for the mother, right? We have, if you have a breastfeeding mother, it would mean that your baby is less sick. So you have more productivity in work. So that mother is coming to work all the time. She don't have to go to the hospital because her baby is not well. So we have some, a lot of benefits to the institution, to the mother itself, to the society, to the family and to generally everybody so we need to say that to that that um woman or that person who is asking about how long you should breastfeed the baby so it provides all the nutrients right decrease mm -hmm. asthma and decrease rashes and all of these things additionally who recommends six months exclusively and after six months, we continue breastfeeding, but we want to complement with solid food at this point in time. It goes up to two years and beyond. Now, one of the things is breastfeeding bond. You are able to bond with your baby. And if we have more breastfeeding, I think that we would have more love in the country. Okay. You know, because a baby, when you look at your baby breastfeeding, there's a connection and there's a bond nobody could give your baby that bond and that connection. Right. So you and know of your mother's love. So you wouldn't just go out the road and shoot down somebody because you know of love. You know? <laughs> Understood. <laughs> but when it comes to the culture and the mentality behind breastfeeding in public, you know, now we see more women being, you know, brave enough to just pull out the boob anywhere and breastfeed their baby, including mm -hmm. myself. Before, you know, you would have heard people say, you know, cover up, put something over your breast, don't expose yourself while you're breastfeeding. But the culture is shifting. So people are, you know, more confident to breastfeed publicly. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage women to breastfeed publicly because it is a natural occurrence, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might just be in a random place, you know, waiting in a waiting room and, you know, a baby is fighting to pull out the boob. And some women are more cautious because, you know, people are watching, but we want to encourage you to feed your baby, right? Yes. Um, you know, some people feel like, you know, it may be more appropriate for them personally based on their religious beliefs. So, um, you know, based on their background to pump the milk and give it to baby in a bottle, if that works for you, I'm guessing you know by all means but yeah. there should be no shame connected to breastfeeding in no. public so once the public is aware of the benefits so once they are sensitized and they are aware of the benefits of breastfeeding then they will be able to accept breastfeeding right and they wouldn't shun the mothers and say why are you breastfeeding here or why you don't cover up your breasts mm -hmm. you understand so we also want we're having conversations about creating um lactation pods so lactation pods you'll see them away in the united states um probably in like the large airports and in the malls and some work areas like big com work complex that is a small area where mommy will safely go in, just have a chair, a table, a sink to wash your hands, and mommy could go in there and breastfeed baby. Or you could go in there and express breast milk. So we're having conversations about having lactation pods in different areas. So that Well, that's good that you brought that up because I was wondering, because with a number of these buildings, whether it be government or private, mm -hmm. corporate workspaces or, you know, some persons work in retail, the building that they are in just doesn't have the space for it. Sometimes they are fighting for storage for mm -hmm. their own equipment yeah, or just, real. you know, for the business itself. So in that case, what can employers do to support mommy? Is that is it that they should send her away to go to a place that she deems safe and comfortable to come back? What can the employer do to assist in a situation where, you know, there just isn't the space at the business to facilitate? So that's why the, the lactation pods, they are mobile. You can create them mobile so that they can move you put them on wheels and you could just carry them to one area to another area, right? If they don't have the physical structure within the building to create, because it's just a small space, just a chair, a table, a sink for mommy to wash yeah. her hands. Yeah, so that mommy could be comfortable and could breastfeed or express. Right, so is this so, something that the TRHA is working on? We're having conversations. So we're hoping go. sometime in the near future they will look into that. So you spoke about the breast pump, um, the portable ones. Mothers could invest in it. When you think about the cost of the formula, right. um, yeah, and how much the baby will have to drink, 
we could invest is a is a good investment right also um the industrial relation allows for paid leave for um mothers to go and breastfeed so time during the work time they are allowed some time to go and um express and breastfeed so it's important wish. for women to know yes. their rights. Yes, right? and we want to challenge the the um, all the ministries because breastfeeding wouldn't be only the health. It wouldn't be health. We have health for all. So you have to put it in all the different institutions because we know that we are in a woman-dominated environment. Most mm -hmm. of the women are, child you know, childbearing age. age. So mm -hmm. we need to provide for them because at the end of the day, breastfeeding to decreases all the illnesses. We have a healthier society, so we want to nurture that kind of environment where mothers could, you know, they are encouraged to breastfeed and we provide that space that they could really feel safe and um, breastfeed. All right. All right. And so that's a great recommendation for moms to invest in those portable pump. um, wireless pumps that you can just put yeah. in your bra while you're going about I mean, that doesn't mean that you have to work while you're breastfeeding, but just it's a lot more um, private. Yes, we know. have had mothers who have had, um, who have been breastfeeding or expressing while working. Yeah, we have had that. Exactly. Yeah. But we're, we're just making sure you know that you do have that time yes. to mm. take to it's specifically important. breastfeed. Mm. But if you are in a situation where you have to work while you're breastfeeding, that is probably the best means of doing so. Now we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back right after this as we continue our conversation on breastfeeding for World Breastfeeding Week. See you soon. Good morning and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Update. Now we have been chatting this morning with the lovely women from the TRHA, Mrs. Akila Makachi Alfred as well as Mrs. Deborah Cook Warner and we have been talking about liquid gold or breast milk and this morning we are encouraging women to continue to breastfeed for as long as they possibly can but to exclusively breastfeed as long as it as it is humanly possible exclusively breastfeed for that first six months now we know that this week we are celebrating world breastfeeding week and the trha is having a number of activities that's happening to promote this now on this saturday they are having that um awareness walk in collaboration with the Breastfeeding Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, Miss um, uh, Alfred, please please tell us a bit more about the walk that's happening on Saturday. Okay, so the walk is done annually by Trinidad and Tobago Breastfeeding Association. So they normally conduct a walk in Trinidad and they'll come to Tobago and conduct a walk. So they are non-profitable organization that... Um, we collab with them or they collab with us, right? So we normally run a best breastfed or they will normally run a breast breastfed competition and we assist them. So we go to the different communities and we interview the mummies and we see the babies. So we have, um, there's a criteria. So we're looking at exclusively breastfed for the first six months. We look at babies, um, skin and integrity of the skin. We look at babies immunization. If this is up to date, we look and see how babies plotting on the go chart. If it's within WHO standard. We also talk to the mummies to find out how much information they have on breastfeeding and if they could advocate for other mothers. So if they can, again, we say support, provide support for other mothers who are breastfeeding. Yes. And Mrs. So, Warner, what are the other activities that the TRHA would be having this week for the breastfeeding awareness? So one of the things with the breastfeeding week is really to bring awareness and educate mothers, educate the entire society is that global activity um, about the benefits of breastfeeding so that we would ultimately have an increase in the breastfeeding rates, right? For this year, next year, 2025, we want to carry take the breastfeeding rate to 50% according to WHO standards. So the two ARHA, the staff, um, we would be going to the different health centers. We'd be visiting various um, offices mm -hmm. to just educate the staff about the um, importance of breastfeeding and the importance of creating spaces so that mothers, so that 
could have that environment where they could feel free and safe to exclusively breastfeed. Right. And there are myths that surround mm-hmm. breastfeeding. I would have touched on it a bit earlier. Like some persons feel as though once the baby is getting to a certain stage, maybe passing that six months mark, that the breast milk is now too thin and not sustainable um, for the baby to stay full for a particular period. Mm-hmm. And there are persons who um, would do a lot of things to supplement because of this. What do you recommend and what is the right thing or the fact as opposed to the myth? Okay, so after a baby is completely successfully exclusively breastfed for six months, at six months the baby is now doing much more stuff than he was doing he or she was doing when before six months. So they're now active, they're getting ready to creep and walk and stuff. So at this point in time, we encourage them to supplement. So we add, we take out one of the food, we complement with a solid food, Mm -hmm. right? We encourage the first food we will try to give them is like a rice cereal, a single grain cereal. So we check, test, test them out with a single grain cereal, rice cereal, and we add it with the breast milk. So you're not at this point in time, you're not going to look for the best formula on the on the shelf. Mm-hmm. You're continuing the breastfeeding, right? So you're adding breast milk with whatever you are giving the baby. And gradually you introduce food, solid foods to the baby. But you continue breastfeeding because breast milk still has some nutrients, a lot of nutrients, which would be beneficial to the baby at this point in time. Right. And, and also we know that the breast milk change to meet the needs of the growing baby. Okay. So as baby grow and develop, then the content of the fat will increase or the content of the protein or whatever that baby needs for the energy and thing, it will increase and decrease to meet the needs of the growing baby. So that's what they have to understand as well, the content of the breast milk and how it changes as baby grows. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Now, there are also other myths that are more um, cosmetic you know, or uh, surface level, as we would say, very, um, you know, based in vanity. And a lot of women who feel like, okay, well, the longer I breastfeed, you know, um, the more deformed my breasts and deflated my breasts would become. So what are the facts surrounding, you know, women trying to maintain, you know, the shape of their breasts by deciding to cut short that breastfeeding period. Some persons decide, okay, I'm not going to breastfeed. I'm just going to exclusively pump. Um, while others decide, okay, six months mark, I reach a six months mark, I'm done with the breastfeeding, you know, because they're trying to maintain the shape of the breast. Tell us a bit about yes. the facts surrounding that. And the thing is, it's a choice as well. Breastfeeding is a choice. So there are mothers who definitely will say, no, I'm not breastfeeding because I don't want my breast to hang. But if you think about it, all these stars, the superstar, Rihanna, you're so the picture with Rihanna, yeah. she was breastfeeding, right? So we encourage, one of the things we encourage is to wear a supportive bra, right? Um, You could pump, yes, but once you finish breastfeeding, the breast returns to its normal size and it, its normal shape. Um, one of the thing is, though, as women, as we grow older, the breast, the tissues, it will lose, the breast will lose its elasticity. So even if you didn't breastfeed or you breastfeed, you did, it may just fall a little bit. Yeah. Because right. it loses, you know, that elasticity. Right? right. But we try to encourage them to breastfeed, wear supportive bra. And right. we try to encourage men to move away from that vanity yes, um, way of thinking because men. that totally affects yeah. how women see themselves. A lot of women are not not breastfeeding for themselves, but because they feel like in order to maintain that physical attraction with their partner or for future partners that they should, you know, um, do that. I mean, a lot of women even resort to, um, you know, going through different cosmetic surgical yeah. procedures to, you know, try to bring back that, mm-hmm. you know, pre-baby uh, breast firmness. But I mean, again, that is a personal choice. Yes. And, you know, mm-hmm. there's no shame in doing what a woman thinks is best for herself and her own self-esteem, but it should never be rooted in how you are being seen by someone else, i.e. a man who is not really a man, but clearly a boy because he doesn't understand that this is how the woman body naturally 
develops over time. Um, but before we go, the onus this year is to really encourage employers to make provisions for women who are breastfeeding. And so talk to the employers and the supervisors and managers to make the provision for women who are under your supervision or your care while they are working with you mm -hmm. to have that space and the opportunity to breastfeed. Yes. So we want to challenge the employers to provide that space. No big space, it's just a little area where you have a little fridge, somewhere comfortable, a chair to sit on, a little a fridge, sink. a sink where they could wash their hands, and the fridge of the um express the milk that they could store the milk until they're ready to take it at home. So we want to challenge the employers, right? Starting with the public sector and even onto the private sector, all spheres, even where we go to the playing fields, little areas, the, um, the airport, the hospitals, where we have stuff, areas in the hospital where you could breastfeed. Um, and different areas, we want to challenge the Ministry of Health and the THA to really work towards supporting these mothers so that we will have a healthier society. Right. And even bringing that into legislation to yeah, allow it to be yes. law for mm -hmm. employers to provide not only the time, the time but the space. Yes. Yes. Now, breastfeeding is extremely important, and there's no shame to the women who physically cannot breastfeed. But if you can, you definitely should, because it is the best form of nutrition, nutrition. for your baby. Mm -hmm. And this conversation this morning was quite hearty, and I want to thank mm -hmm. you ladies for coming on. You thank know, me particularly fun. being a new mom, I really enjoyed this discourse, and I hope that all audience this morning though maybe a different target group mm -hmm. we really thank you for joining us we thank you for being a part of this discussion and if you have any tips or tricks you know uh, regarding breastfeeding you can put it in the comment for another breast meet another breastfeeding mom to see and you can always send this a live video to someone who you know is breastfeeding or would be breastfeeding very very soon guys we want to thank you so much for joining the conversation this morning thank you for your likes your shares and your comments and thank you for all that you have been doing to make tobago updates the number one broadcaster here on the island of tobago again i say thank you and i hope to see you soon have a great day guys <music>